Okay, welcome on a different day in Wiltshire. Thank you. Now, you, uh, yesterday after we closed, you were referring to some important um, sort of alien abduction stuff. Yes. Could you talk about that, please? Yeah, I, I could. I can tell you a little bit about, you know, yeah, one one person I'm, I'm seeing right now and uh, about her experience because I know she's fine with it. And um, so she came to me, like I would say, two months ago because uh, she knew there were, let's say, unusual experiences she had. And um, she's from Hungary. And she asked me if I could give regression to her. And I said, yes, we can do this. And in her, you know, from her view, actually, it was kind of like, so to speak, positive experience. You know, I'm a contactee. And uh, then I told her it might be that something else comes out in regression. Maybe things you, you even don't remember. And if you, if you experience this, if you see this, you know, it might be not so pleasant. So, but she agrees that it's fine. I want to know what happened to me because I can only recall certain things, but I don't have the full picture. And we started with the regression, and uh, the first regression, when she went in trance, she could remember very easily what she was taken as a child. She was very, very little. She was a baby, so I think a few months old, and she was, um, she described it, it's not like she was just elevated, you know, up, you know, it's like, so she cannot describe what it is because she said you cannot see it, but it's kind of like, it's like a, like a tube. She describes it as a tube. But it's not like an elevator. Okay. So what about this tube? Okay, the tube. It's um, she describes it as like like an energy, but it's like like almost like a jail, a jail, and it's where she gets uplifted. And so she went into a room, but she cannot describe exactly. She felt it was on the ship, but she couldn't see much. And there were I think there were f four what we call the grey ones there and they did like an operation on her spine they opened the spine and they opened the stomach and they she couldn't describe what they did but there was like an operation and uh, then at the end it was kind of close and she said there there are no scars nothing you would not no one would see it you know they can do it in a way that there's simply nothing there but she knew it happened and she said also something was in the spine, also left within the spine, but she, she don't know for what. And um, so, and then she was brought back. And the way, what what comes in my mind right now, the way they, they, they kind of get in contact, did get in contact with her was they gave her an image from a dog. It was a German Shepherd because, she, you know, she felt very comfortable with the dog. You know, but from her point of view, it was like, just like a holographic picture that she's not afraid. And in another session, so she, we had an experience, or she had an experience, um, she was kind of taken out of the body, you know, because... Now, before we go to that, yeah. can we get any more details about what, what the greys were like and what, what the details of, the, of where she was? Yeah, so she, can, she cannot describe exactly where it was, you just well, know... Well, any, anything at all? Yes, anything, anything what came... What she said, it's kind of she was uplifted and she felt she was in the room, you know, and, and the light, it's different to the light what we have here. It's not like this, this really bright light. So it was like a, like, like a soft light, but uh, she could not see too much. There were certain, um, she was lying like, like on a table, similar like this. And uh, there were, when I recall it correctly, there are like there have been f four beings, you know, and she described. She was sending me a picture later, you know, and they had like this black eyes, you know, like. Well, were they round eyes? Any they, shapes? They any were details like, like at all? Almond eyes, and she said, you know, like the heads like more bigger here, and they, she said they were, the jaw goes like this, you know, it's like it goes into a more, yeah, like goes down, goes down here. That's the way she describes it. And, uh, and yeah, what she said as well, it's like the communi communication is telepathic. You know, it's not, not like voice to voice, it's telepathic communication. But during the whole process, she's al always in a um, very, very strong stress and there's fear around because she doesn't know what happened. So if I do the regression, her whole body is vibrating. Really, she's like this in a regression, you know, so then always it's not so easy to get her calm, then she can recall recall what she what she saw. 
and um, and these four people and she always said they just do what they have to do it's kind of like it's like a routine and uh, she also recalled and later that she has had several like experiences where she's taken and they, they just check how the body is in, in the way you know if she's healthy or but what is going on with the body so but she said it's always like a routine they do like a routine and in one of the sessions so we did several sessions I just need to see that I can recall it in the right order uh, there was also so she describes it like the one they are smaller there was in the last session and they she said they were they were about one meter on height and they just like uh, their smile but she said it was strange because it was like a smiling but not like with a strong emotion behind there and um, in this session now I know I'm jumping a little bit there there was the last one because it's the most fresh in my memory and there were also four people or four from from um, these races and uh, what 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 they did there also it's kind of like um, they put an energy in her body and uh, and she didn't want it to happen it just happened but nothing what she could do she was just like paralyzed she can't move in this uh, memory she said I was I was just like floating something was holding me like an energy but she couldn't recall lying on a physical table so she, but she was on something and she was horizontal and uh, and she said they were kind of there there was an energy coming within her physical and within her body but it wasn't her physical body because she said in this kind of like uh, memory it was that she was taken out of the body and she was with her non-physical body there and they were putting an energy but she felt even so it was like coming inside her and I found it interesting because she said it is like love it's like it's a frequency of love but she said it's, it's not like love we experience it's for them it's like a tool you can generate the frequency and, and she said it's the, it was really really weird for her because she, she felt she could recognize it as love it should be love but it wasn't love you know in, in a way and she said it's totally different how they experience this than a human being would uh, experience love so I found, I found this um, quite interesting so they did they the so they were came. smiling they were smiley yeah they but it was like like always the same expression yeah it was not not much like and she said it, it was like a also like a routine it just did the things like a little bit robotic like they just did it you know without emotions you know it's kind of like like a standard procedure you know and it was like she cannot say how long it was lasting it was maybe she said maybe 30 minutes and then you know until everything is ready you know okay this is, job is done then she was placed back and she found herself back in her sleeping room and she saw her body when she came back she saw her body lying in the bed and she found it also she said whoa it's, it's strange you know and so this was all out of body this was out of body so yeah. they were doing an operation on her on her astral body yes and she said she has it with the body she has like memories where she is taken with the complete body and this was a memory when she was taken out of the body and she felt very uncomfortable and she was very afraid because she felt you know before she lost uh, the ability to uh, remember she felt she was in her room you know she said she was it was early 20s 23 24 and she felt that someone was pushing her getting out of the body and she was getting very very afraid because she didn't want to get out and then she said I, from from this point I couldn't remember anything that's why she came for the session it was the last session I had so it was, she was completely taken out of the body and they did it on the astral body and then taken back and she could see her body still sleeping on the bed and she found it's very very strange because the body is there but I'm here you know and she merged back with the body and then she just remembered that she was falling asleep as well so this was the um, last and how long has this been going on um, since she, since birth and I think uh, her mom is affected as well because her dad uh, worked in the military in Hungary. So what about her parents? And what did she work with? Her dad was in the military, but right. I cannot see. Well, what type of military? I cannot tell you exactly because you see. Air Force, Navy. 
I, I don't, I, I think I cannot really do, I don't know what, what kind of military, you know, so, and because if I do the session, I took my, my whole, I know the content is, is interesting, but I'm, I'm looking to help the person to get out of the trauma and that my whole, so, and I record the session, so I, I don't have yeah. all the memories in my head. So, to say, so this is very important, just to repeat uh, from your first part, that this isn't, you're not in the business of getting... No, that's, that's uh, why it's a bit difficult for me to Which is quite different to the way. other researchers, yes. which is very important, because your business is to heal. Yes, this is my focus. I, I know I have the content, you know, and uh, I know it sounds a bit strange, but it was always like, like, like this for me. Even I hear these stories, it's kind of like it doesn't shock me. I don't know why it's like this. I hear it like... Yes, that's, if I would know it. So how did you heal that person's trauma? What was involved? Did it, yeah, what we, what we did in the, in, in, uh, after, so what, what we do in the first step is kind of like, because it's a lot of anxiety with her, with this person, you know, it's an anxiety to get the memory because you don't know what you will experience. She doesn't know. You just know something happened to me. And then there's fear of what, what, what had happened to me? What, what did I do? And then after she recalls, you know what the whole scenario then we can then I go more in detail so to get more information about how they look like it's all on my tapes that's why I don't have it so much in my memory right uh, now it's, it's important about the detail of the, of the greys because one of the things about the, the military abduction ones is they use fake greys or yes. man-made greys yes they've got different features is there anything any indication they have any other type of being that she was experiencing she experienced uh, in another fashion and she said it was like a taller what we call the gray but it's not a gray skin she doesn't describe it as a gray skin it's like more brownish like she said it's like mud you know like like wood mud mud mood wood mud as in from <laughs> like, a tree no no from the earth if you put water mud. in there okay mud, mud. okay yes mud. like and uh, so like it's not really like grey, what we would describe as, as a grey colour. And she said these beings are taller, and it seems like they have like um, they they are like they have more sayings about the smaller ones they operate, and they have emotions, and they even can you know there are much more emotions there, yeah. And the smaller ones. She Apart said, from the height, are there any other details? Yes, uh, comes to my mind the one uh, the smaller ones. Um, they had like not they were wearing something on her body but it was like really really tight not like clothes we have but it was like like a protection or the way she described it you know and it was the same color they they are from from the skin you know and it was difficult to see for her because there was light there and uh and she say it might be that she saw the color differently because of the illumination in the room yeah, so as you said, you know, it might be not exactly... that sort of, uh, bit like the sort of lights we have now, like LED light, it's sort of like a, it's not a radiant light, it's sort of more like an incandescent light. Yes, that's, that's the way she described it, yeah, so a little bit like this, and that's why she said it's hard, you know, to, to, to really say it this color, it's exactly the way it looks like, because it might be manipulated from, from, from the light. This, and these are the types of uh, beings she's in contact with. So and was there a sort of a, a rich sort of green color anywhere? No, she didn't mention. She didn't mention this one. Or the walls or no. She she said there were like like equipments there in the room. So this is like in the first part. She just gets the memory. She just helps the person get the memory, and then you know one, once they know what happened, they relax. They say, okay, this is what happened. Now I know. Now I know. And then in the second part, we, we go again into the memory, and then I, I ask and they can zoom in. They can take memories and get memories and get more and pay your attention, and then you will get more information if they want to. So they can zoom in because it's not anxiety there anymore so strong and uh, as far as I remember I know there were some things in the room but I can unfortunately not tell you I know it's all my, my, my tapes but you know so, so what other and any any anything else anything else you mentioned the other assistants um, anything else no it's always seems like it's a routine what they do it's always like a routine it's like we do this, it's very straightforward, this needs to be done, this needs to be done, this needs to be done. Once it's finished, she gets back. 
and she doesn't know why it is like this. How anymore. often has this been happening? I think all her life. I, I think she's she's taken on a regular basis. I think you said yesterday about something about as the when the baby is actually growing it in the in the womb. Yes. They are already the hell already have implants. Yes, I think so. Yes. This is Could you go into that a bit more? Um, this is based also not only on people with the implants. They are not only people. They have been um, contacted or abducted. I think this is also like like people they don't have contacts to, etc. So, um, it is. And uh, what I see in the session, because I do regressions also, people come uh, where I do regress them into the womb of the mother because they have a feeling mostly people that did a lot of therapies already on healing work that said there's something there, something is there. And in my observation, first of all, um, in the womb of the mom, uh, our brain is already so far developed that we it can record everything. It's like a hard drive. And we feel the emotions of the mother. So we can even, I have people that can recall conversations. So everything what the mother went through, the child, you know, in the womb goes through as well and uh, this is my personal observation it's kind of within the womb they already get some I call it imprints imprints like like patterns and this is kind of this is this is something what I know and I cannot tell you why I know it I just know that you already get imprints when you are in the womb you get already it's like a programming you get certain programs and this later will influence your emotional behavior. How is that programming entered? I mean, how, where do you get it from? I, I think it's on, on a non-physical, on a etheric level. You can just put it in. It's, I can also not tell you, but I know it's actually quite easy to implement this. It's not complicated to do things like this. Is that the, the conditions of mothers working in, or? Yes, you can use it's, it's, You can use this as well. So what you do, if. If I would, I, if I would be someone who would do it, then you look at, at the trauma and on the line you, you have to look on the family line. There's a history, you know. And uh, if the mom has already traumatized and their mom and their mom, it's very easy to imprint the child because it's already connected with this line, this line of memories, because it's it, it comes into the system, and then you know it. it it depends in which way you wanna, you, you want the person to go, you know, or to react. You implement certain programs, and they will most likely, at, at least at the beginning, until the point they might, let's call what we call wake up, because then you can it will change. But if they're still in deep sleep, they will just follow certain programs, and it, it, it has to do with their reactive pattern. You know, and has to do if they feel worthy, if they feel like a failure. All these things you can manipulate it with this quite easy. So, um, I mean, how how do you know that? How does that work out? How does how do you get that information? Um, I c I don't know. It's it's like I have it inside me. It's the same when I see implants, and the moment I see implants, I know if it can be removed or it's not possible to remove. You see, I had another, I, I can speak about this case, there's another lady, she doesn't have um, an ET experience, but I think you would call it she's target by, you know, um, I don't know who it is, if it's military or involved, I do not know. Um, but she came to sessions to me because she lived in a certain place in Dublin, and many people told her, don't move there, because there's a lot of stuff and it's very, a very rough area, you, should, you shouldn't what move there. What do you mean there. by a lot of stuff? It's it's kind of like like where things happened in Dublin. You know, yeah. I cannot tell you. You, you know, sometimes yeah. it can be. Uh, sometimes yeah. they shoot people, okay. and yeah. you know, this happens in Dublin, right? And there are drugs involved. You know, so we have these things in Dublin. Yeah, and uh, so this is a place. So where they didn't recommend her to move there, but she moved there anyway. And since she moved there, she could. She she had voices in her head and. They told you, so she never wanted to have children, and they told you you have to have children, and things where she would just freak out about. And then she came to a session to me, 
and to ask her to help her. And she went to other healers as well, and they found out she has many, many implants, and they removed also some of the implants. But she didn't come to the session because of the implants. What we did work on was to strengthen her trust and, you know, that she believes in herself. Because I, I think, what I said yesterday, one thing are the implants and we can feel like a victim and say, okay, I cannot do anything because I have implants, you know, and I'm controlled, you know, and I'm the victim. Um, I don't think so. I, I, I think the the implants, they, they just take what's already there. There is already, there is already something in the person. And I think uh, as a young woman, um, she had a very difficult childhood. Yeah, so there's already trauma in the childhood and then it's much easier to manipulate you. It's very easy, you just take this and you get triggered and you, you put a little bit more in there, very easy to manipulate you then. So and that's part of the social programming uh, yes. in the first place. And when she came, you know, to, she came to a few sessions, we didn't work on, on the implants, but in, in one session she asked me, oh, could, could, could you look into this? And then I said, yeah, I, I could do. And uh, this is what I told you yesterday, you know, what I, what I saw, you know, was kind of like there were implants in her teeth, in the teeth in there, they went up into the eye, went back in here, in, into the spine, up into the brain, you know, there were implants quite strong into the solar plexus, up over the heart chakra, goes also into the spine, back into the head, and what she has as well um, was um, like holographic images. You know, it's, it's like a holographic image within her energy field. So, and uh, they can, it's like, the, it's playing, like it's like playing a movie and gives you some imprints as well. So, and... Uh, what do these images show, these holographic images? It's, I, I think you can, maybe, if, 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 you know, if someone, it's like, um, so maybe it's a good example, if, if someone is sending you thoughts, you can do this. You know, like like remote viewing and to try to influence a person. You can do it in a very helpful healing way. You know, like you know, giving you so maybe you're sick and I'm I'm giving you thought thinking at you. You know, I think you can heal yourself. You know, very encouraging. Yeah. But you can do it in the opposite way. And this is like it, like it operates. It operates on the same in the same way that it's just like 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 a holographic image with a certain information and it just vibrates the vibrates the energy into your system so um, this is the best you know and this is also what she's very sensitive it's the way also she described it to me so and um, when I uh, told you know that's what I see she said yes this is also the way I experience this myself and for example in this case it was not easily to remove you know I, I wouldn't say I'm specialized in re removing implants, you know, so... Well, I mean, it's knowing, it's knowing that you can and knowing that you can, that's huge. I, I wouldn't say you can't, but in this moment it wasn't possible, it was not even, you know, it was not even possible to enter this from the outside, it was so strong implemented in her body, it wasn't only in the... You're talking about energetic implant? Yes. Yeah. It was also within your body and she spoke also there like an entity within the body, you know, so, but she's so aware that she can differentiate that what's me and what's not me. Some people, they, they can't and they, they would think it's me, you know, and this entity could just act and they think it's me, you know, but she knew it's not, not her. And uh, in this moment, you know, the, the only way it would work was it had has to come from the inside out, not from outside in. But um, I would say... Um, what do you mean by that? Um, from, from, from the energy, it was such a strong, she had also like, from the energy, it was like a belt around her energetically, like it's a form of implant, so, and this belt, I couldn't go through it, it was not possible, it was so strong, so there was like, I know it sounds a bit technical, but it's like you find a big spot there, and then you, you can enter this and go into the technology from the inside, but my knowledge was not enough to deal with this type of energy. That's all that I can say. I just knew, okay, I can, cannot do it in this case. Did, were you able to give her any uh, help in terms of her well-being? Yes, what we do, we do work uh, on, so to speak, to help her to not feel like a victim. To, to not feel, you know, someone's just taking her over. We help her to get into her, step into her own power, into her own strengths. 
so we're helping her so that she knows that she can deal with these things. That's what we are doing. This is crucial to you, get the patient to heal themselves. Yes, helping them to, to feel, um, you know what, even it might take a while, but I'm not powerless, you know, and I can deal with these things. You know, this is what I do, this is my main focus. You know, so. Do they have to do anything specific to sort, to sort of deal with these things? What do they do? What, what, yeah, what they, it's, not, it's not easy. It's really not easy because you have it, she has it every moment. She's aware of it, you know, and it's, it's, she, she's studying and she says it's distracting her from studying. So it's very, very difficult because she hears the voices all the time. And that's, that's voice to skull technology. What kind of voices does she hear? Um, it's in her head. She describes it in her head and it's telling like her. Humans or what? It's like a human voice. But I, I cannot tell you where it comes from. I do not know. It yeah. doesn't sound like it's, it's a man talking in the microphone. Yes, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, she hears the voice and someone, it's really, it's like, like we speak now, that's what she hears, you know, someone's just constantly talking to you. You know, do this one, do this one, you will do this one, and everything that she doesn't want to do, you know, so, and that's why. Well, we give that a little bit of a pause. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, very important, uh, where basically you're introducing what is going to be the next part yes. of this space is 45. Yeah. Now, who is this guy? Tell us all about him. Okay, his name is Jerry. And uh, I did get in contact with him because I was I did some research on the internet after having some sessions with people who have been abducted. And I wanted to see if is there anyone else in Ireland, you know, because the idea behind is maybe to put the people together so they can exchange and they don't feel isolated and alone. And then uh, I saw um, from the Irish magazine there was an interview with Jerry. And uh, which so magazine was that? It's uh, the Irish Mirror, I think. The Irish Mirror. Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken. Is yeah. that something that people could look up and have? Yes, they can, you know. Yeah. But so his name is Jerry Battles. When was that? Is it? Poof, I don't know. The interview ago? was like I think in 2013. Okay. Yeah, it's a few years back. And uh, so what happened to him? Uh, was in 2001, um, I was like shortly in December, I think it was around Christmas time, and um, at this time he had an experience being on the ship, he was taken on the ship, and uh, he described it to me, so I, I met him, he lives near Limerick, and what he told me was um, there were many people in the ship lined up, he was one of many, all humans, and they were kind of in a state of trance, so they were not really awake, they were kind of like just standing there. And he said, when it was my turn, and what he meant is kind of was his turn that they did work with him, it's kind of he kind of woke up from this trance state. Yeah. And uh, he said, I couldn't move, you know, I could just like move my eyes, and he could see where he was. And what made it different, and why the whole thing came in, in, into kind of place the way it went was he wasn't afraid and the ET felt it or he saw that he's not afraid and started to talk to him why does it come that you're not afraid and everyone else is afraid yeah but he wasn't and there was a whole communication you know starting between the ET and him and this is kind of what he wants to get out into the public what uh, he told him he speaks about one being and um, so I don't go into much detail there because he can just tell you everything quite in detail. Yeah. And so there was this conversation and then he was brought back. And when he was brought back he couldn't remember a thing, totally wiped out his memory. But what happened, strangely enough, that his jacket was found in a local hospital. Yeah. So on the roof and someone said, you know, your jacket is there. And the jacket was a trigger for him. So like maybe it was two weeks later, the jacket was found in, in the hospital and someone brought it to him, you know, because he knew the person who found the jacket in the hospital, we really strange things. So he got the jacket back and the moment he saw the jacket, because this was the jacket he had on at the night, on the day where it happened, he could remember everything. And uh, so I, 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 I saw the interview in, in the internet and I just had a feeling, you know what, I just 
get in contact with him. But there was no phone number, nothing. So um, I just went with a very good friend. She told me, you know, I'm going to come with you. Let's see if we can find him. Because he lived, you know, there was like the name of the village near Limerick. So we went there. Couldn't find him there. But we went to the post office and they knew he moved to another village. And then we went there and he was really at home. And then we said, you know what, um, we just wanted to listen to you, to your story. And he was so touched because no one believed him. And he said it was so difficult after, you know, and because they all said he was just getting mad. And he, sa he said, I know I'm not mad, I know what I experienced. And he even tried to get regression hypnotherapy done, but also um, they refused to work with him because obviously they didn't believe him either. Yeah, so he was for all the years pretty much on his own, you know, and he had to deal on his own with all these things. And he said also his family, he said, oh, I don't want to know so much about it, so he doesn't speak about it. And then he was so happy uh, to meet us and he told us the whole story, it was very emotional. And what we, what we said, he said, you know what, Jerry, I know someone and I will just get in contact with this man. And I thought, on you, Miles. Yeah. And I said, you know, I just will try, you know, let, let, let's see, maybe, you know, I know I have a big audience and maybe we can just get your story out there so people know about well, it. Well, that sounds like a damn good idea. Yeah. So thank you. I'm so, you know, delighted that you really, you know, got back to, well, that's to, really to good. us. You that's know, fantastic. You can be here. Thank you so much. And hopefully the next part will be in Ireland, Limerick, with this, this contact team. Lovely. This will be great. But in the meantime, it's a sunny day. It's Wiltshire, and we're going to go hop hunting for crop circles. We go to the crop circles, so it's okay. going to be exciting. You can't come this far and not go and see a crop yes, circle. Yes, we're going to do this now. Well, thank you very much indeed. I really thank appreciate you, this, and let's move on with this in a positive and a really wonderful way. Yes, me too. Because thank I know you so your, 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 your contactee has got a very important message. Yes. And we've got to get that message out. Yes. Okay, that's the end of the series bit. Let's go and have some fun. Yes, Thanks. thank you. Thanks. Goodbye.